Like in any procedure in cardiology, TAVI also has important steps of evaluating the patient. Which type of patient needs TAVI? If you see, patient should have severe aortic stenosis with or without some aortic regurgitation, but there should be calcium in the valve to anchor the valve. And the patient should be having some sort of symptoms uh, like a breathlessness, chest pain or uh, syncope. In fact, if not symptoms much, at least a pre-existing LV dysfunction or heart failure symptoms, whether symptomatic or asymptomatic, also demands a, a TAVI procedure. And then once we decide that patient has a TAVI clinically as well as by confirmed by echocardiogram, then we do uh, what is called a CT angiogram TAVI protocol to see what exactly is the calcium limits, what the valve size of the valve fits in that particular patient is decided by doing a CT angiogram. And after that, we also see what are the coronaries like, how is the aortic size, and how are the peripheral arteries uh, so as to uh, do the procedure safely. And very rarely, in spite of the, all these precautions, if a patient has pre-existing conduction system blocks, they could develop the requirement of pacemaker. And the ideal steps would be uh, to assess the femoral artery, and then do a small uh, wide bore puncture and then uh, take the valve through femoral artery across the aortic arch and uh, deploy that valve with high pressure in the aorta and, uh, and the valve sits there. And after the valve is implanted, we check either by echo and angio whether valve stenosis is totally gone or a leakage is gone or not. And finally, we also clinically assess the patient and close the groin and he needs an observation for 6 to 12 hours in ICU and next day the patient becomes ambulant and can be discharged.